Hello class, my name is Santa Christensen with the K in DEF 351, and for my notable deaf person presentation, I decided to talk about Nancy Rourke. Now who is Nancy Rourke? Nancy Rourke is an internationally renowned deaf artist focusing on oil painting. She's an active artivist with works expressing deaf themes of affirmation, resistance, and liberation. She's been creating art for over 60 years and is responsible for innovating Devia art through her style that has been coined now as Rourkeism, the use of only primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, also including black and white. She uses her art to make political statements about social justice, artivism, human rights, and solidarity on matters both in the deaf and hearing world. So why did I choose Nancy Rourke? I chose Nancy Rourke because I found her art to be appealing to the eye. I also found her story to be inspiring, going through an entire professional career before being laid off, being when she became the artist we know today. It's a reminder to never quit and always to strive for greatness, regardless of any limitations you may feel holding you down. Birth and Family Nancy Rourke was born on September 5, 1957 in San Diego, California. Her mother was from Port Huron, Michigan, and her father was, being a full-blooded Native American, was from the Mesa Grande Band of Mission Indians in the Kumeyaay Nation. Forgive me for if I mispronounced. When her mother moved from Michigan to San Diego, she moved to the Barona Band of Mission Indians Reservation, where she would meet Nancy's father. When Nancy came into the world, it wasn't until six years later that they finally realized that she was deaf. In an interview with the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, Nancy explained that a doctor believed that she had a learning disability that prevented her from being able to speak, which her parents didn't necessarily believe. Nancy would communicate through writing and loved to draw and create art, which set her on the path to become the world-renowned artist she is today. She appears to be pretty private about her personal life, so finding pictures and names of her parents was a bit difficult. School Rourke heavily relied on oralism to communicate, having attended mainstream oral schools intended for the hearing. It wasn't until she attended Rochester Institute of Technology in New York that she learned ASL. She went on to receive her bachelor's in graphic design and painting in 1982, with a master's in computer graphics and painting in 1986. Career. Although having plenty of art education and experience under her belt, Rourke did not feel confident in becoming a full-time artist and didn't think she'd succeed in just creating art. So, she originally went on to become a graphic designer for over 20 years. She first worked in San Diego at Xerox, a printing company, then as a palette designer at 20th Century Fox, creating color palettes to colorize previously black and white films, then moving to Seattle to work as a graphic designer for Microsoft, creating Windows logos. She then was unexpectedly laid off and, without, and left without work for a while. She took this time to get back into painting, which she had dropped before she got into the workforce. Then, in 2010, she discovered her passion of creating art for and about the deaf experience, culture, and history, known as Davia. Inspirations One style of art that inspired what work Rourke would create was Fauvism, the founder being Henri Matisse. He used a lot of bold colors that Rourke would then use, to use, would then use in her works, as well as exposing people in society by using colors that matched with what he was going for. Her second influence was Jean-Michel Basquiat, who is somewhat simil similar to Matisse. He often uses reds, blues, and black, while always incorporating a message into his art to express rage and frustration. Another inspiration is Matt Ciso, who lost his arm in a propeller incident while a child. He expresses his rage and frustration as well through his artwork, being completely self-taught. She compares this to her experience as being deaf, which inspired her to express her own frustration with society. Contributions. Thinking about her own deaf Deaf Hood Journey, Rourke submitted a proposal to the Puffin Foundation, which provides grants to artists and art projects. She wrote up her Deaf Hood Journey and submitted it for one of their projects. A year later, her proposal was accepted, starting her journey being involved in Deaf Hood via her art. After studying about Deaf culture, artists, and history, she wanted to create art that other Deaf people could look at and relate in their shared experiences. She once had a solo show in Denver, which only contained works relating to Deaf Hood and Deaf politics to which only hearing people attended. They are intrigued and fascinated with the work, and many were taught about deafhood. Rourke also works to incorporate the Divya curriculum for deaf children, and has been to many deaf schools nationwide to teach and make art. She even has created art in the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic to warn people and take isolation seriously after contracting a serious case herself. An example of this artwork is listed directly to the right, and right above, a mural was made for Michigan School for the Deaf. And that was my presentation. 
If you're curious yourself on learning more about Nancy, I recommend the first link, uh, which brings you to a YouTube video, bringing to an interview that she had with the NTID, and she talks about her own upbringing as well as her path that she took to make art. Thank you.